anybody who's had anything to do with forests and protection over the last 25, 30 years now knows this man, recognises it with an Order of Australia medal for his work for <coughs> conservation, a man who knows our public forest estate like no other living human being, a man in my days when I was young and wild and on the front lines, we used to call the field marshal. Wherever he sent us, we went and, um, and we often won because of his remarkable strategic focus, his ability to translate science into much needed conservation and no deeper, greater love for our forests. Dylan Pugh. Okay, uh, thanks Sue. I'd like to acknowledge we're on <coughs> Bundjalung country. Um, what I'd like to do today is put Terania Creek in context. So, um, before Terania, uh, there was controversy over logging in the um, what's now the Border Ranges National Park, it was in Wyangari State Forest, uh, and that uh, got focused in 1973 when the Border Ranges Preservation Society was formed in response to a logging road being constructed up onto the Wyangari Plateau. Um, so because of the controversy, the government decided to protect a, a little patch of intact rainforest in, in Grady's Creek to be the Grady's Creek Floor Reserve and to log the rest of the rainforest there on 50% canopy retention. Uh, in, in 1975, there was a Border Ranges National Park proposal, um, but the campaign gained momentum in um, uh, when they decided to log Leavers Plateau, which is a bit further to the west, an area that had been protected in the 1940s by the lo local logging company. They didn't want to log it, this uh, lovely patch of hoop pine dominated dry rainforest. And so uh, rainforest became a major issue in the state campaign, leading up to 1976, when Neville Rand was elected with a one-seat majority. So, as with Trania Creek, there was a lengthy inquiry after Neville Ram was, uh, was elected. The, um, uh, and the inquiry, uh, in, in sorry, 1978, the government announced that they would create a narrow snake-like national park along the Queensland border. And, um, but but the, what, what they'll do first is they'll revoke the uh, Greatest Creek Floor Reserve and log it before they made it into the national park. So this is the situation that we had before Terrania Creek. Um, so, in, on the 16th of August, 1979, there was the Terrania Creek block blockade, and it changed everything. Don't underestimate the significance of that blockade in the scheme of what occurred. It, it inspired people around Australia and around the world. But, so it was the first blockade in a Western country, um, and it, what it did, though, was it generated national media coverage. And it, and it made rainforest protection into not only a state issue, but a national issue that had ramifications for decades to come. And what it inspired local people as well. So because of Trania Creek, the uh, people at Barker's Vale threatened a blockade as the forestry went ahead with logging uh, Horseshoe Creek in the Border Ranges National Park. And that, because of Trania Creek, that scared them off. And then in 1982, we had the Nightcap Action Group uh, have a, a, well, what was really a direct harassment campaign uh, up in, um, at Mount Nardi. Uh, and in, in October 1982, they got a court injunction to stop the logging. So all this led to, uh, uh, sorry, there was also then campaigns, again inspired by Tr Trania Creek for the Murray Scrub, uh, Hastings, which is now where Kimby National Park, the Black Scrub, which is now part of New England National Park, Washpool and Barrington Tops. And on October 1982, the, the government, Premier Rand, made its historic rainforest decision. So that protected 120,000 hectares of uh, rainforest and, and quite a bit of old growth forest mixed in with it uh, in national parks and floor reserves. And that was all because of Trania Creek. We would have had these tiny little patches otherwise, these little floor reserves here and there, but Trania Creek created the will of the government and uh, because of public pressure to protect the 120,000 hectares of other forests. And that all came from, training, uh, from uh, 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 the Shannon Market way back then, 40 years ago. So, 
Don't underestimate what we can achieve. So um, I'd like to go forward in time a bit. I mean, there was so many people inspired by Trainee Creek, as I said, around Australia and around the world. It, it led to blockades all over the place. It led to uh, sand mining uh, actions in 1980. Uh, but uh, the North East Forest Alliance, uh, inspired by Trainee Creek, was formed 30 years ago at the Big Scrub Environment Centre. Our aims will protect rainforests, old growth forests, wilderness and threatened species. This month, August, is their 30th anniversary of our first blockade at North Washpool. And that was part of a 7,000 hectare wilderness area left out of the rainforest decision to appease the loggers. So they were put, pushing a road through an Aboriginal site to log rainforest in a wilderness area. So uh, we had a protest action over two weeks and 14 people were, were arrested. Uh, but it was the uh, impact on that significant Aboriginal site that then halted the logging at that time. And they tried to resume in 1990. We had a court case and we finally brought rainforest logging, as mapped, uh, to an end. So 10 years after Trinity Creek, we managed to stop all logging of rainforest on public lands in New South Wales. So over the next decade, uh, NEFA had over 20 blockades with quite a few court cases. We also had actions at sawmills, and even occupied the Forestry Commission's head office. So here locally, uh, we partnered with local groups. The um, first blockade in, was in Wine Wine uh, State Forest in 1994. In 1995, we had a blockade adjacent to the Rocky Creek Dam. I mean, who would log adjacent to our water supply? But anyway, uh, to stop it being uh, logged. And we found, or, or Hugh and Nan found, three endangered minion quandong. So that was only known from one individual before then of this endangered plant. We found three in this area about to be logged. And, you know, incidentally, we later found someone who killed them. But um, at that time, they were still there. So they stopped logging there and they moved across to Nullum State Forest in, in 1995. And the locals there blockaded because upset by the logging operation. And we went in there after they'd stopped and found 60 of these endangered minion quandong had been bulldozed or cut down with chainsaws. They'd gone from a, a small population into the major population remaining and devastated it. So then we resolved to shut down all log logging operations in the Moorlambar management area. And we had blockades at Mebbin and Wollumbin. So the last local blockade of public forest was in Wine Wine in 1997. Uh, and in uh, 1998, we achieved a major expansion of reserves. But it was not until 2003 that the rest of Wollumbin, Wine Wine, and Bungawalbin were added. We ended up with 738,000 hectares being added to national parks and over 300,000 hectares uh, being made into formal reserves on state forests. Now, I can't, I can't underestimate the importance of blockades in achieving this, of getting the media attention, of of causing these governments to change their... their cause you're up against the government, you need, to, you need the public to realise this, you need the public support, and blockades are what achieve that. So, uh, at the moment, there's a blockade uh, down at the headwaters of the Klang uh, River, uh, down near Bellingen, uh, that's been set up to protect a, an important bit of forest there. And it looks like soon we are going to have to have a blockade in Braemar State Forest, just south of Casino, to protect an important koala population that the government's intent on logging. So, you know, here we are, another Shannon Market. I'll, I'll announce we might soon have a blockade at, at Braemar. So, you know, heed what happened with Trainee Creek. Um, so we need to protect our forests now more than ever because they take up and store the carbon we are emitting. We really need to enable them to regain their carbon carrying capacity. Without our forests, there's no chance of limiting global warming to one and a half degrees or even two degrees. We need them to take up our carbon. We also need them to give many of our threatened species a future because a lot of our species are declining and dying, such as the koala. We really need to protect their habitat. So we need to stop land clearing. We need to protect our forests and we need to start replanting them to give ourselves a future. It's time for another round of non-violent direct action to stop logging of public native forests. Thank you. So it's time, did everybody hear? It's time to take more direct action to stop the logging of our public native forests.